Hello guys and welcome. Recently, a viewer of mine was kind enough to send me a box of old Apple laptops. He goes by the name of Pendleton and has a YouTube channel of his own. In his latest video, he converts a dead iMac G4 into an external display. So let's open up the box and see exactly what he sent over. If you'd like to send me anything tech related, my parcel collect address is listed in the description below. This is a very neatly packed box. The first item we're greeted with is an awesome little plaque of my channel name. That is honestly so cool and I really appreciate that. You may have noticed it in a few recent videos. I ended up painting it silver. The first laptop appears to be an incomplete iBook G4. According to the post-it note on the palm rest, it is faulty. The next machine is a 12 inch G4 power book that has definitely seen a hard life. It appears to also be missing several screws. Also in the box is a 50 watt charger, which should work with every laptop in this box. The last laptop is packaged very well in bubble wrap. It's a titanium power book G4 in need of restoration. Thankfully, the PowerBook G4 appears to turn on. Straight away, it booted to whatever install disk was inserted into the DVD drive. A blank 60GB hard disk appears to be present in this system. I couldn't actually install macOS from that DVD, as it was for a PowerMac G5. Overall, I'm not sure which model specifically this is. However, I will be able to restore it. The 12-inch PowerBook G4 appears to be completely dead along with the iBook G4. So this video is going to be focused on restoring the titanium PowerBook G4. The backplate has various stickers, one of which suggests it was repaired sometime during its life. I'll definitely be repainting the worn hinge covers. The keys have also left scuff marks on the display. It also looks as if someone has tried to pry open the bottom of the case in a few places. I made a macOS 10.4.6 installer USB, which seemed to install fine. We can now see exactly what model this PowerBook is. Turns out it is a high-end 800MHz model from 2002 with 1GB of RAM. This model, without upgrades, cost 7395 Australian dollars in 2002. Under the battery we can see it actually came with twice as much RAM as the regular model and a larger hard disk straight from Apple, meaning it likely cost closer to 8,000 Australian dollars upon release. I was very surprised to see a battery count of only 22, with a capacity of 6,433 milliamp hours. That is one very good battery in this machine. First of all, I think it's time we give this laptop a good cleaning. Starting things off, I sprained the top lid with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. I attempted to minimize the appearance of small scratches by using some cut and polish. Since the scratches are quite deep, this didn't actually have any effect. The keyboard and palm rest are also very grotty. You'd be surprised how unsanitary used laptops can be. I began gently wiping the display surface with an antibacterial cloth. I'm really hoping the keycaps haven't permanently damaged the display coating. Moving on to a microfiber cloth and lens wipe, I could see that the display was starting to look pretty good. The base of this laptop could do with some sticker removal. The battery also appears to be genuine as well as original. The main sticker peeled off without too much effort. If I was a little bit more careful, I could have gotten it off in one piece. The paper sticker required a lot more effort. Using some mineral turpentine did seem to make it easier though. To get inside the PowerBook, I removed all of the T8 Torx screws on the base. This model was one of the first to come with the airport card built in. The 60GB hard disk is next to come out. With a manufacture date of May 2003, could this be a replacement drive? I unplugged every connector that was attached to the logic board. The DVD drive came out pretty easily. 
I ended up following an iFixit tutorial since I've never actually disassembled a titanium powerbook this far before. Underneath the keyboard there were several more connectors to unplug. The remaining screws holding the logic board in place could now be taken out. With some careful manoeuvring I managed to get it out safely. It's interesting that the heat sinks are attached to the casing and not directly to the CPU and GPU. Since I forgot to do it earlier I'm going to take out the two 512 megabyte RAM sticks. The old thermal paste definitely needs replacing. It's crazy to think that this laptop is nearly 18 years old. I also cleaned off the other chips that make contact with the heatsink. The intake and exhaust fans also needed some clearing out. The original build to order hard disk is supposed to be 5400 RPM, leading me further to believe this is a slower 4200 RPM replacement drive. I wiped down the inside of the rear panel. Quickly I realised that the clips that hold the casing together had broken off. Not just in one spot, but around the whole base. Before we glue it back together, I wanted to bend some of the metal casing back into shape. Of course, there are better ways of doing this. However, my small pair of pliers worked great. Since this is on the inside of the casing, I put some super glue wherever the plastic had broken away. There was also old thermal paste on the weak looking heatsink. The graphics processor used a thermal pad, which looked and felt pretty good, so I left it how it was. I took the hinge covers off so that I could sand them back and repaint them. Over many years the paint had become brittle and flaky. Sanding them back reveals the shiny metal they're made of. Since I've run out of white spray paint, I chose to simply apply several layers of white paint from my paint pen. A small dab of thermal paste was applied to the processor, and then I began the reassembly. Having connectors on both sides made placing the logic board back in somewhat challenging. Once in place, I put all of the screws back in. The power input jack could now be inserted. The optical drive, with its four rubber mounts, proved to be a tight fit. Even the hard disk sits on small rubber mounts to protect it from vibrations and drops. The airport card and the last of the ribbon cables could now be installed. After letting the glue dry on the bottom case, I reinstalled it. Straight away it fit much better into the body of the laptop. With all the connectors attached to the logic board, I reseated the RAM and the cleaned out keyboard. Before I did the final touches, I thought I would power the laptop up to see if it still worked. Thankfully it did. The hinges I painted were slightly too white and a bit uneven. Definitely an improvement nonetheless though. I tried using some silver polish on the lid to minimise scratching. However that proved largely ineffective. Mineral turpentine helped remove any leftover sticker residue. I must say the laptop looks a whole lot cleaner now. I think it's time we see just what this expensive power book from the year 2002 can do. The browser I'll be using is the latest release of 10.4 Fox for PowerPC G4 computers. This can still be easily obtained online. Loading modern websites such as YouTube is possible, albeit quite slowly. Video playback sort of worked, a few frames showed up here and there. Let's try playing some old games. Starting off with Age of Empires 2. At a resolution of 1024 by 768 it was very playable and a lot of fun. Using an external mouse is definitely recommended. At the lowest graphic settings at 640 by 480, Halo Combat Evolved was somewhat playable. I did notice that the laptop was getting quite hot at this point as well. Quake 2 running at the native resolution of 1280 by 854, highest settings ran buttery smooth, but that's not too surprising given how old the game is. The typing experience on this laptop is truly excellent. The keys have a great tactile feel with an adequate amount of travel. The laptop even works great when hooked up to a 23 inch cinema display. Aesthetically this is one very well designed power book. The screen bezels were also razor thin for 2002. I'd say it definitely has a solid selection of ports. I'm very glad that I've been able to get this laptop clean and looking good once again. 
I definitely want to give a big thank you to Pendleton for sending over these laptops. If I manage to fix the other ones in the near future, I'll be sure to make videos on them. Anyway, if you've liked this video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Just a quick side note, sorry for the delays on getting videos out to you. I've actually been working quite a lot lately and haven't had a lot of time to make YouTube videos. Anyway, thanks for sticking around and I hope you're ready for more videos in the near future.